present a short review about the common uh, side effects or complications from botulinum toxin injections and uh, how can we manage them. So what are the common uh, causes of common pitfalls? Either asymmetric injection points, meaning asymmetry leading to one brow, for, one eyebrow, for example, higher than the other, or getting too close to a muscle that should be avoided, or getting too far from a muscle that we're targeting, or using generic products that could cause hypersensitivity reactions. So symmetry is very important because the injector's eye is not a precise measuring tool. And placing the injecting, uh, injection points at uh, areas that are not very symmetric could lead to uh, unnatural appearance. We've published uh, our technique using a geometric measuring method to, to avoid such pitfalls. I'll start with the upper face with the glabellar lines. These are the common injection points at the procedures, the head of the corrugators, and sometimes we add two additional points at the tail or attachments of the corrugator where it, it attaches to the skin. Why do we get ptosis? It's either that we go too high, so we catch the lower fibers of the frontalis muscles. If this happens, we find that the medial eyebrow dips down because we relaxed its elevator. On the other hand, if you go too low and the diffusion, diffusion occurs to the eyelid elevator, the elevator palpebrae superioris, then we will get eyelid ptosis, which is uh, much more difficult to manage. This is a case of angioedema that I've seen uh, after a generic botulinum toxin uh, product and uh, it resolved with an injection of diprofos, which is a long-acting steroid that works for two to three weeks. So, what can we do about eyelid ptosis? Some workers suggest a technique using botulinum toxin. I tried that, it didn't work for me, and I still use sympathomimetic eye drops, which temporarily elevate the eyebrows, or the eyelids, I'm sorry, when there's an occasion. And if you inject fillers for remnant uh, frown lines, then you must be prepared with hyaluronidase. This is a real case that was shared by a colleague. The forehead complications are mainly asymmetry, like the Mephisto sign or the elevation of the lateral eyebrows, brow toses or brow asymmetry, and celebrities are not immune uh, to such complications. So how can we avoid such uh, pitfalls. If we inject too low, as mentioned before, then we get the lower frontalis elevating the eyebrows and we get eyebrow ptosis. And if we inject too medial, leaving the lateral part of the frontalis muscle, it would compensate and contract to lift the lateral eyebrow and we get the Mephisto sign. So to avoid it, we need to measure the full forehead and inject from temporal fusion line to temporal fusion line, making sure we're getting the full frontalis if we don't want a lateral eyebrow elevation. And we keep a safety distance by measuring the distance from our injection points to the eyebrow. Usually two centimeters are enough, but I always stick to 2.5 centimeters. The dotted lines down there are uh, the depressor uh, are the points where we inject if we need to elevate the eyebrows or the medial eyebrow. So this is how we do it. I use a measuring tape, disposable one, and take the measurements. If we stop at this point, the medial uh, the middle of the eyelid, of the, uh, of the eye, at the iris, then we'll get compensation by elevation of the lateral eyebrows. If we need to lift uh, the eyebrow, then
then we will add two additional points three to five units down there and three units at the lateral orbicularis oculi muscle these are the medial fibers of the orbicularis oculi muscle some people refer to it as a separate muscle as the depressor supercilii and other workers suggest that it is only the medial fibers of uh, the depressor sup of the orbicularis oculi whatever it is it would lift the medial eyebrow if we do inject it so this white point is at the depressor supercilii it would lift the medial eyebrow again here we're correcting an asymmetric descent of the medial eyebrow injecting the depressor supercilii muscle if we have remaining wrinkles because we missed some of the lateral fibers of the frontalis muscle we can correcting correct it by injecting one or two units above this fold and if we need to lift the lateral eyebrow then we inject the superior lateral fibers of the orbicularis oculi muscle i just grab the lateral part like a sandwich the lateral part of the eyebrow and i inject two to five units in this area regarding the orbicularis oculi injections mainly for uh, lateral canthal lines or crow's feet if we inject the medial fibers of the orbicularis oculi we will lift the medial eyebrow if we inject the lateral fibers then we will treat the crow's feet or the lateral canthal lines and we could also lift the lateral eyebrow the main side effects are a frozen or an unnatural look which gives an impression that you're not really smiling from the heart and people do not trust you a chipmunk smile where only your cheeks move when you smile and you look like a chipmunk and the diplopia if you reach the rectus muscles the scleral show is like a staring look that patients do not appreciate and skin laxity under the eyes in elderly patients so this is an area that i inject only in young patients okay so this has some examples of a chipmunk look and uh, the scleral show the double vision is very annoying of course and uh, it's mainly when we inject beneath the eye and we get the inferior oblique muscles but injecting any rectus muscle would make us when we look to the side one muscle would move faster than the other or one eye would move faster than the other so we get this blurring of vision which is terribly annoying but resolves spontaneously if we get remaining lines usually you get them at the lateral eyebrow then we get we will need to inject those fibers of the orbicularis oculi muscle we need to avoid the zygomatis major and minor so we don't go too lateral or too low to avoid the drooping of the angle of the mouth and to prevent i just ask the patient to smile maximally and measure two centimeters from the lateral canthal, canthus and I don't go any medial to a line drawn vertically along the lateral canthal line. Usually treatment here is watchful waiting and the problem resolves within four to six weeks when the orbicularis oculi muscle starts regaining some of its uh, function. So I think for the sake of time I will not go through the pitfalls about the injections of the neck and the lower face but it, they are mainly asymmetric